Will you welcome, please, Miss Betty Davis? I'm going to talk to you tonight in Southern. <laughs> because, you see, all the ads today said Jezebel was coming here tonight. Jezebel, The ads, did right. you see the ads? Yeah. Jezebel, yeah. so i got to talk to you in Southern. Okay, go ahead. It'll drive you quite stark, raving mad before the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's very authentic. Why, why are you so good at Southern accent? You're not from anywhere near the South. Well, you want something very strange? Yeah. Uh, the Yankee accent... It's terribly different, but it isn't. No, truthfully, it is much easier for a Yankee to do Southern than you can imagine. You mean a New Englander? Really? I never thought of that. I don't, it, I don't it's see incredibly what... the same in some ways. It, it's quicker mm -hmm. because it's colder country, you know, which is what makes lazy... No, it's true. In all countries, you find very lazy speech in, in where it's hot, you know. Yeah. But it is incredible. Well, of course, you know, all the, the Yankees really have them came from Virginia. When yeah. they migrated north, you know. So th there's a, there's a... Anyway, I always wished I'd been born down there. Does that have anything... And to... I just have a feeling for it. Yeah. And, and when I went to dramatic school uh, at John Murray's, he, he had nicknames for everybody. Mm -hmm. And for some crazy reason, he always called me the little southern girl. For some crazy reason. And so much of my career has been playing Southern women, you know. Right. But not the Southern woman. Not the one in Gone with the Wind. No, well, you out of the water, I'll tell you that story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is Does a very, this is a joke on me. This is a horror on me. Uh, I get very right. nervous and dry. This is not gin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check and see. I had... <laughs> It isn't. I had, uh, in the huge fight I had with Warners as a kid when I went to England and ended up in court with them there, I went to see Mr. Warner just, you know, as a last hope, because I was fighting for good directors and good scripts. Literally. That's yeah. all I cared about. Because money always follows, and I was doing some of those marvelous movies that some of you remember, how awful. Parachute Jumper, The Menace. You know, The Menace, I was a corpse. All I did was fall out of a closet. But you did it so well. Didn't I do it well? I yeah. thought so, too. Yeah. That was made at Columbia in eight days. So anyway, I went to see Mr. Warner, and he begged me not to go. He said, mm. please don't go. He said, I have just optioned a marvelous book for you, a new book by a woman named Margaret Mitchell, and the title is Gone with the Wind. And I was so angry about what they'd been giving me, like all these parachute jumpers and things. I said, I'll bet it's a dilly, and walked out of the office. <laughs> if you can imagine, went to England, had the trial, came back about a year later and found out what Gone with the Wind was. Yes. Then there was a deal on for Mr. Selznick to borrow me for it, way in the beginning, and Errol Flynn. And Errol was the most beautiful man that ever lived and the most charming, but he sure couldn't have played Rhett Butler. And I wouldn't not. do it. I wouldn't do it with him. You know. Did he ever find that out, or would you want him Well, Errol was the most know. honest person about his talent. You know, he made no bones about saying I'm not an actor at all. But he Errol. just was one, yeah. of the, he was one of the personality people you're talking about. He was marvelous. Yeah. That thing that you did is really amazing. That um, did they did the studio take you to court or did you originate it yourself? Well, I perpetrated it by signing for a picture in Europe, and so of course they enjoined me. So and then I thought I could get the whole thing settled, mm -hmm. uh, but the case went against me. But what an incredible thing at the time! I mean, no actor was ever upstart enough to was dare terrible, to take a studio no, into court no, because it, they'd been getting rotten parts and and. Uh, well, I knew that I knew that was my future. I, I knew that if that only directors and good scripts could give me a career. I couldn't do it uh, mm -hmm. with, with the junk, that's all. Had you set out just to be a, st 
starred? You know what I mean? Or did you no, want to be I a, never, a, I, an actress? Well, I, I always wanted. As well. oh, acting is. I feel I am an actress. I hope. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I never thought I would. Uh, with my taste and what I like to do, I never thought uh, I would ever be a box office person. Because yeah. you see, when I went there in '30, imagine were looking at me after they'd been looking at these really beautiful women that had been in silent pictures for years. You know, imagine seeing Jean Harlow and then I come through the gate, you know. And, and because, because I started in the theater and, and stage actors, uh, it wasn't important how you looked out of the theater. You know, I didn't wear makeup and, and uh, glamorous clothes. You know, I just dressed in an ordinary little Yankee way. And they didn't understand people like that. Was there something wrong with me for having found you beautiful all that time? Well, you weren't born. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> no, but I, I was... I bet you money I could be I your mother. I was precocious. Well, precocious, you're, yes, that's right, you still yeah. are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the true sense of the word precocious means oh. you're brilliant. Oh, does? Don't, have you ever looked it up in the dictionary? No, they always I say just... some child is precocious, and we yeah. get, we've gotten to believe that it means they're just impossible to deal with. It means they're way beyond their years, and they're bright. So they can be a precocious adult, too. I can would it? think so, oh, yes. Yeah. How come you didn't kiss me, then, when you came out, if I'm so... Well, I have to do... Th uh, let's see, this is the third show. Hmm? By the fifth show, we'll give each other a hell of a kiss when I come out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It's funny, we talked about that before. You know, I'm against I it. I am rather sick of all this kissing at the talk shows. Well, of course, that's the old Yankee thing in me. You know, yeah. I, I don't use first names immediately, and I don't kiss people I don't know. I just, uh, just don't. Yeah. I'm, I've I'm seen a lot that. of people I don't know I'd like to have kissed, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll find out who Mostly they are. young men. I'm oh, like oh yes, of course. We'll find out after this message some of the names. Here's a message for all you grown-ups. No, 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 no. Oh, we won't? <laughs> Who'd like to be kids again? It's called The Ultimate Toy by Lowry.